What's good guys, the novice, the shining, 1980. Right, quick context to our horror background. Don't watch horror, usually scares the Jesus out of me. I, I just get easily scared, so I don't, I don't want to mess with it yet. But I want to learn, and this movie was a good opportunity to do so. So I just thought, why do I watch it? And I did. I like this movie. Guys, my impression of it in a sentence is this. It's the nerve-wracking moment before a jump scare. Except it's never ending. It's the never ending that that's that's it in a sentence. The never ending like tense feeling of a jump scare. Uh before a jump scare. Except there is no jump scare. It's just tense throughout the so, uh, a tight knot in your chest. So, uh, <laughs> and I give three examples, big examples of um, yeah, <laughs> I thought I was pointing out four fingers. Three big examples of that in the music, in the camera shots, and in the acting as well. So first off, with the music, sometimes the music will do, or I say the sounds, uh, music sound, whichever. Sometimes it would have like a wah 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 certain sound. Sometimes there would be um, almost like a. I'm gonna be looking at my notes. Sometimes it would be like a. Oh, okay. Like a thumping, like heartbeat sound as well. Like dum dum dum. And then sometimes there would just be music that. Yeah, associated with like a certain uh, scenes. The like actual music, not just sounds. But whenever they played music or they did certain sound effects in this movie, I noticed to myself it always had like an eerie feeling because it was just the right amount of low pitch. But I just kept going on and there's something I learned about when I was young called crescendo because he used to play a, a brass instruments, trumpet and so on, where music rises. It's like basically, um, you listen to like club music. It's the rising of a music and then the drop right but instead of the drop where it goes boom 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 or something it gets like really big this this movie just has like the like you hear the music the things get more and more tense but it never hits that bang bit where something horrible happens but you expect something horrible to happen so built in me some kind of like dog and, and dog and bone response. I don't know what the word is. I don't know what the phrase is. It built in me like some kind of trigger. So when I didn't hear the music, I was expecting something terrible to happen. Because why is it so silent? Do you, do you know what I mean? And throughout this movie, it frustrated me so much. But then I realised looking back, to go back to my sentence uh, summary, it's doing that on purpose. When it has that lingering feeling, even when you don't hear the um, certain music, you're expecting bad things to happen because it, your your association in your mind, right, and your memory of what happens when you hear certain music, when you hear certain sounds and certain scenes. And the second big thing, camera shots, right? So specifically the tracking shots, the various scenes, and then certain wide shots, but more more so tracking so there's like two big scenes one um the the tricycle roundabout rider but the tricycle ride about those scenes and they repeat them constantly where you will see one of the characters riding around in this um in this hotel where where the main characters are staying and whenever they do this, obviously tracking shots are designed to make you feel like you're following the character in the literal sense. But whenever they do it, because I don't know if it's like the big space of the environment or the fact that you just go long periods of time where they're just doing mundane stuff. But the fact that everything just feels so still is like so unsettling to me. So whenever they follow, it's just that fact put together. Whenever they follow these characters, especially the dad and the son, whenever they follow them, I'm always expecting 
it's gonna be like one the the one last corner that they go around, and they'll never come back. So, I remember, it it got so like tense for me at one point. I was watching a movie like this. Right. Like just a little a little hole in between my my hands, because I couldn't stand. I just wanted a really horrible thing to happen. That's how bad it got for me. Like I I preferred something terrible to happen to the the main character, the family. Because I just didn't want them to keep doing these tracking shots where they were following the characters and then nothing would happen, but you still have that tense feeling in you. So that's another way that, again, they brought that kind of nerve wracking. This film brought that nerve wracking feeling inside of me before a jump scare, but without doing the jump scare itself. And then lastly, big thing the acting is one of the things that made me like this movie and made me that really understand that kind of tense feeling they were trying to reinforce in me. Jack Nicholson as Jack Torrance. He did his thing in this movie. My experience of Jack, uh, Jack Nicholson is from The Joker in uh, Batman uh, 89 and then also The Departed as well. And I've seen him in other movies but he's memorable in those two things and now this. He has like a werewolf kind of face where I don't know if it's like his, his actual face, his facial expressions, or just a mix of both. But when I look at him, I feel like he's about to just shapeshift into some some demon possessed or something. So maybe this movie was calling me all along, like you need to watch this, because this is where that feeling comes from. There are scenes where he's perfectly polite and calm, and I can't stand it, because it's so unsettling. <laughs> It's, there's a, yeah, there's a, there's a scene where he's talking to his son, unsettling as as heck. Another scene where he's um in a in a job interview. Same thing. The guy is just his demeanor. He can be really still, and then he can switch it up, and he can seem like a little shaky, like he's had. Like he's had like a, a bunch of drinks or something like that. He's about to start swinging for someone's face. But in this case, in this movie, because of the vibe you get with this movie, so you know it's not just a case of, oh, he's a little bit out of sorts, he's a little bit tired, he's a little bit pissed off. No, he really does feel like a guy just like fighting to stay sane for lack of a... I was, I was going to put it another way, but yeah. <laughs> the son, right? Uh, Daniel Lloyd, Lloyd, I believe is his name. He plays Danny slash Tony in this movie. Another one. Very creepy vibes I get from him. Him is at the opposite end, where, whereas uh, Jack Nicholson is always something like unsettling to me about that guy. And just like just looking at him the opposite is true with him but it's, it still achieves the same effect somehow i'm watching this boy and he seems so innocent he's got like he's he's that stereotype of the the missing person on the on a on the face of like a milk carton in america he's he's that guy or that boy and you watch him and you can tell that he means well but some of the scenes where he's alone and he's just talking to himself or talking to even his mom or his dad i'm just like oh wow you are a piece of work you're so odd <laughs> this video, like, god that, i'd rather you just be like, again the cheap horror movie possessed like i want i want you to be all the way scary instead of just disturbing because disturbing is i can't do anything about that scary whereas if you're a freddy krueger type scary you're, you're more like a comic book to me. You can be defeated. That's the vibe I got from this guy. Not the comic book thing that I said. The, the unsettling kind of scary where it's too uncertain. Again, they're reinforcing through his acting, through Jack Nicholson's acting, that feeling of, oh no, like these guys, I don't see a good future for them. <laughs> you, just, you just know. It's just a vibe you get. But uh, guys, other than that, don't
those are basically my big f thoughts uh three things on why this movie getting very good very nerve-wracking throughout and even now like if i wasn't filming this and if there wasn't like a reflection like me seeing into the camera and knowing what's behind me i would constantly be like sitting like slanted in my back turn because like i said when i was watching this movie there were times where i was going like this because i couldn't stand to directly look at the screen that when a horror movie is really good i can't make eye contact directly i do this thing where i look without looking like i look at the corner of the screen and i just focus there I was doing that throughout half of this movie. So that's <laughs> that's that's an A plus for me. Tell me what you guys think down below if you've seen it. Um what do you think of this movie, The Shining, nineteen eighty? If you haven't seen this movie, would you watch it? I'd I'll definitely recommend it. Um it's, you can probably buy it on like a, an app store I did or maybe it's on a streaming service that you have, whichever. Yeah, please go watch this movie. It's a great movie. Even if you're not too into horror, it's not like gory. It's just un it's just a bit unsettling. A bit. It's very. <laughs> like I said, tell me what you think down below and comment. Press this thumbs up button. Share it with as many people as you can. And press that subscribe button, guys. Come on. I'm trying to get more subs. Other than that, signing off. Salute.